Hello, it's me, Sweet Pea, the friendly alien, and I was just watching a YouTube video called The Secret Life of the American Teenager, and, well, it was strange because I was sitting there watching the video, and suddenly the phrase, OMG, this is so bad popped into my head, and I didn't know what it meant, but it wasn't something that felt like I would say, and suddenly Amanda walked into the room, and I realized that I had picked up her thoughts. <laughs> so, sometimes that happens. I actually thought it was really good. I thought it was fun to see the young teenagers talk about sex because it's rare that you never really get to see a teenager do that, even if what they're saying is a little kooky and unenlightened. But anyway, the real reason why I liked it was because I saw that the mother was played by Molly Ringwald. I had dreams about her for 78 years before I started my Earth mission. I would dream at least once a night about her movie, Pretty in Pink. And that movie was something that had a lot of messages for me about what Earth would be dealing with and what I might be able to assist in when my mission came up, which is now, which is why I'm here making this video. But anyway, so Pretty in Pink, well, I like pink. I think pink is a very pretty color, and so I like that. It's called Pretty in Pink. But I uh, also like it because, well, Molly Ringwald's character represents, in some ways, the sensitive female that is meant to be a bridge to the white, well, predominantly white, capitalistic, um, male, earth male, earth male. <laughs> that sounds funny to say. So, I was pretty excited to see that Molly Ringwald was in this show, and it made me take special attention because it seems as though her character is now a mother of a teenage girl who had done the deed and had sex. And so, all the while, without anyone really knowing what is happening, they are all talking about the daughter and if she's a slut or not, and there's two girls, and one is, <laughs> is very innocent and pure and believes in Jesus Christ as her Savior, and so she talks a lot about Jesus and how sex is a sin. And then there's a dark-haired girl who is uh, what they call a slut, and has had sex and uses her sexuality as a way of having power over the girl that won't have sex. And so they're fighting and the girl who's had sex is talking about sex as though it's silly 
to think that people would go to hell for doing what is physically natural. And basically recognizing that it is a normal biological function, whereas the other girl was taking it from a purely spiritual Christian standpoint and deemed it a sin. So, anyway, I thought I would just share with you that the mom is uh, a very important person at this moment in time in waking people up to the sensitive, young, feminine um, woman who is creative and is able to um, withstand adversity and being an outsider and feeling rejected and feeling like she's not good enough. And through that process, she's able to hold space for herself even if she feels hurt. And in that process of her relationship with Andrew McCartney's character, that she helps to awaken in one of the, the more traditional, conditioned, capitalistic, um, matrix, you know, participant, the upper class uh, male, that she's able to turn one of them away from rigid ideas of what kind of human has value. And so that is in, that's significant. And a lot of people, of, of the teenagers of that generation, saw that movie and it spoke to something within them that has been explored in the arts for a very long time with Romeo and Juliet and West Side Story and, you know, just lots of different things like that have carried on through the theatrical traditions because healing between families or healing between class is something that has to happen on earth if there's going to be peace. And a lot of people, a lot of the yen or the beat down, downtrodden, don't feel like they have any worth a lot of times, and so they play at a lower vibration. And so their goodness doesn't get heard. It's, it's too low of a vibration. Whereas the upper class, they, they know their worth because worth on this planet is money. Because money equals the ability to survive and enjoy yourself on this planet, which is necessary to be here. And so, since survival equals worth, then money equals worth. And so, these rich kids at the Pretty in Pink High School, they knew their worth. And so, their energy was at a higher frequency or vibration in the sense that it, 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 had, it had more resonance. And so, its ability to manifest was greater. And that's why they had more power in the social structure. And so that's why it's really important to raise your frequency and heal anything, anything about yourself that makes you feel bad about yourself. If you feel like you're a slut or you feel like you're an asshole or you feel like you're you know, any mean, nasty name that you could call yourself or anyone else. Because that's the thing, too. If you are calling someone else a bitch, she's a bitch. God, she's such a bitch. If you're doing that a lot, it's telling you that you maybe were around someone who was bitchy towards you growing up. Or you yourself may be acting out and being bitchy to others, and so you have this bitchy person in your life to help you learn about bitchiness so that 
you stop being bitchy or letting others be bitchy towards you. You know? So, that's, that's how life works. So, if, if you can look at what names you call yourself and what names you call others, and, and understand it from, you know, going all the way back into your parents with your family and your friends and uh, relatives and things like that, and just begin connecting dots. It's kind of like a game. It's, it's a lot like genealogy, and I think if people could start to see healing as just an emotional genealogy rather than passing down names and land ownership and, and stuff like that. It's self-concepts and if you can connect the dots and understand what's happening in your life, what are your thoughts, what are your feelings, what is happening, and stop making it about what other people are doing and make it about what are you doing and really paying attention to that, even if your ego wants to focus on what somebody else is doing, just stay self-focused and look at it. And think about when you were growing up, what was happening, you know, who, who else was like that? Who else had experiences like I'm having right now? How did they feel about that? How did they treat me in relationship to that happening to them? And just things like that. Um, and you'll start to understand how you came to be who you are. And the reason why that's important, the reason why understanding your past is important is because and understanding what made you who you are, it frees you up to recognize that at any given moment, your parents could have made a different choice. Just like right now, you can make a different choice. So could, so could they. But they didn't for whatever reason. And it had an effect on you. And when you can see how the choice, the cause, has an effect, then you can begin to give yourself whatever the better alternative to whatever choices your parents made in raising you, to give yourself the better alternative in the here and now either as an individual or with the help of your partner or friends or even your family now if, if you get along with them better and repair it yourself. I mean, that's a lot of times what is required for healing. And on the level of the country, we're going to have to repair it and re-nurture the world. And it'll be so much easier if we do it on an individual level. And in a lot of ways, it's, it, it, it's the only way to save the world, is to do it on the individual level. So, that's all I wanted to say. Bye. <laughs>